Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Rob Phillips. Today we're going to be doing a 45 minute yin yoga sequence, which is designed to balance and optimize our liver meridian and focus on the element of wood within the Chinese five element cycle. In terms of props, I'm going to recommend maybe having a blanket available, but if you don't have one, no problem. You'll be able to follow along. You just might need to be particularly careful about patting the knees and things like that. So whenever you're ready to get going here, we'll find our way into a comfortable seat and that's where we'll start from. Now, as you do set up your seat here, consider grabbing a hold of a blanket. You can use that to lift the hips. Otherwise, finding any position that you are comfortable to sit in for just a few minutes as we get started. Once you've found that position, you can rest your hands onto the knees, onto the thighs. Close your eyes. Let's begin to settle here. So always starting our practice with the intention to notice the intention to tune in and observe how we feel here in this moment. So whatever may be arising for you here, can you really open up to that? Can you really tune into and connect with that as it is? That of course includes anything that might be arising within your body. It will also include any sensory input from the environment around you particularly any sounds that may be entering. And as well here, noticing and observing anything arising internally, any thoughts, feelings, reactions. Can you really tune into that and connect with those just as they are? And then here, from this place of awareness, from this place of observation, asking what you might be able to let go of. What are you holding on to that you might be able to release? What might be arising in this moment that's not necessary? Each time that you let go, it becomes a little bit easier to settle into this moment. It becomes a little bit easier to drop in and find that connection with our experience. So let's just take another minute or so here, allowing the body to settle, allowing the mind to settle. And really opening up to, really connecting with whatever your experience happens to be here in this moment. Take a gentle inhale breath through our nose. Gentle exhale breath out your mouth. Lower the chin down, slowly open the eyes. And from here for our first pose, we are gonna stay in seated. So again, I think it might be a good idea to sit up on top of a blanket here. We're gonna take the feet forwards and come into a butterfly shape. So. As you set up butterfly, the feet don't need to be particularly close. They don't need to be particularly far, but in general, we're aiming to target the outer hips, aiming to target the inner thighs. If you feel any sensation happening in your knees, you're going to want to adjust until you no longer feel that, maybe even sliding blocks or another prop under the knees if you have those available. But otherwise, once you've got yourself set up here, we'll take a gentle inhale to lift, slow exhale to ease our way forwards, and pause there. Now, as you ease into your edge here, taking your time to listen to the body, taking your time to feel out how far you're going to work into the pose. So there's no specific ambition to get closer to the floor. We're not trying to come as deep as humanly possible into the shape. Instead here, I'm going to invite you to come just far enough that you feel a light to moderate edge of sensation. 
just far enough that you start to feel kind of a light push or pull on the tissues, but well before any point of intensity, well before the point of any sharp or intense sensation. Remembering if at any point you do feel a sensation like that, the body starts to give you that kind of feedback that you might be pushing too hard. Listen to that. Back out as needed. Adjust as needed. Maybe even coming out of the pose early, if that's what's needed. But as long as the body feels safe, the level of sensation is appropriate, once we found that edge, we can relax. Can really settle into the posture. By letting go on a physical level, that allows for the mind to settle. And by relaxing the tissues and taking our time in each pose, that allows us to work deeper to get kind of beneath the surface level that we normally might work out in our yoga practice. And as a final kind of related point to this, one of my main reasons that I love practicing and teaching in yoga is by slowing down, we get a real chance to cultivate a strong sense of mindfulness, we get a chance to really observe kind of the working of things moment by moment. So in addition to relaxing on a physical level, in addition to relaxing within the body, we're also going to relax, we're also going to settle within our mind. And I'll give us some tips and pointers on how we might do that as we work a little further into the sequence. For now, though, here, though, let's just take a few more breaths. A few more moments to settle, a few more moments to release in this very first posture. Feel your final moment here. Take one more complete breath. And then as you're ready to here, slowly inhale, start to roll yourself up. And as you find your way up right here, allow yourself a moment just to relax the shoulders, relax the upper back, release anything that got tight there. Release the legs, shake them out. Again, loosening up anything that got tighter, restricted in your lower body. From here, we're going to shift and come into a resonance pose on our belly. So you can kind of clear out any props that you might have used. Find your way down onto the floor and rest down completely here. Now, I'm just going to keep a little bit of lift in my head because I found that my mic might distort if I go completely flat. But for all of you practicing at home, you know, you can come all the way down to the earth. So here, as you do settle, just allowing the body a chance to release, allowing the tissues a chance to absorb all of the work that you've just done. Notice the sense of energy that you feel as we come out of the pose. So as I mentioned in the introduction, this sequence is designed to target the liver meridian, the element of wood within the body. And so in these transitional moments, we can start to feel that subtle energy, that chi or that prana moving about, rebalancing in response to the poses that we were doing to target things. For now here, let's take just a few more slow breaths. Let the body settle, let the body integrate what you've just done. And to reset here, let's take a gentle inhale breath through the nose. Gentle exhale breath out your mouth.
here, staying on our belly, we're going to now rise up onto our forearms, setting up into a sphinx shape. So for the sphinx shape, we're lifting up into the chest here and creating a mild compression, a mild back bend for the lower back here. So you can adjust however you'd like. You can have the elbows close or far, wide, or um, kind of narrow. Personally, I'm a big fan of setting up in kind of a prayer hand here. I find that feels really stable for my body, so that's another option you might consider. So taking your time here to set up, and once you've found your place, closing the eyes, and really beginning to relax, really beginning to settle right here. Again, we want to relax the tissues so that we can work deeper within the body, beneath the surface, In the back, we should feel a light to moderate compression, but nothing more than that. If the sensation does become sharp, if things flare up, you're going to want to adjust. Or again, maybe even come out of the pose entirely. Respect your body. But again, if we're working safely, if what we're feeling is light to moderate, as we relax there, I'm going to invite us to really notice what we're feeling. What effects are the posture having on the body? What sort of sensations are arising in each moment? And as you notice those sensations, as you tune into them, just asking if you can relax any strong reactions. Asking physically within the body if there's any tightness or tension that you're holding on to that you might be able to let go of. Each time that you let go, each time that you release, it gets a little bit easier to do so the next time. And as we continue to relax, as we continue to release again and again, we get the cumulative benefits of this practice. Start to really feel the deeper work we've been doing within our bodies and within our minds too. Just a few more slow breaths here as you are. Do feel the body settle. Do feel yourself land and relax right here in the body in this moment. Please take one more complete breath here as you are. And with your next exhale breath, slowly lower down and again, release the elbows out. And as I said before, I'm not going to drop quite all the way down just so I don't uh, muffle the mic. But for you here, you can rest the forehead down or rest on your cheek. Really let yourself settle completely to the floor. As you come out here, feel that release into the lower back. Feel that release into your shoulders and just move a bit of breath through it. Again, really get the energy to circulate. Now, in terms of the channels of the body, this particular pose we actually would think of as targeting more the kidney meridian because it is located in the lower back. Of course, no sequence is going to be entirely one type of pose or one line of energy in the body. So kind of completing a full sequence here, mixing it up a little bit with that particular pose. Otherwise, though, here as you settle, let's take just a few more breaths. Let the body integrate, let it absorb the various effects of that last pose that you just did.
Shifting from here as you're ready to use your hands. Gently press the hips back to the heels and you'll end up in a child's pose. Knees can be closer, far, I'd say. In general, having the knees a bit closer will allow you to get a bit more release, allow you to get a bit more round in the back, which is what we want. This is meant to be a counter pose for what you've just done. Let's settle and take just a few deep breaths right here. One more complete breath here in this transition pose. And from here, you can pop yourself up into seated and we'll set up for where we're going to go next. So from here, from here we're going to set up for a pigeon pose, deep opener for the outer hip. The only kind of counterindication for this one is if you do feel a lot of sensation in your knees as you do this, I'm going to recommend lying on your back, crossing your left ankle over the right knee, and taking a figure four shape. You can also consider hugging the leg in as you do that to deepen the sensation. But for most of us who will be practicing the pigeon pose, we'll set that up. Now, here's a case where a blanket may be very helpful. I'm actually going to use that for my demo. We'll start with our left leg first. So you'll start out in a tabletop and take your left knee generally up towards the left wrist. Left shin can slide a bit forwards. Don't get too worried about the exact angle here, but do have that knee wide because we're trying to target the outer hip. As you shift back here, you can dial up the effect on that leg. Now, my general guideline for this is, unless the hip is solidly on the floor, bring the floor to your hip. You can use a blanket, a block, or another prop. You can shift the body sitting a bit more on your side if that feels more stable for you. But again, no sensation in the knees. Finally, once you've got that all set up here, take an inhale to extend. And as you exhale, Walk your way forwards and down. Close the eyes and really let yourself settle here. Pigeon pose is a rather strong opener for the outer hip. But remembering, while this pose doesn't need to necessarily feel easy per se, it should never feel painful, it should never feel like you might be harming the body in any way. So if it feels like the sensations are bubbling up, if it feels like things might be a bit too much, honor that feedback. And adjust or even leave the pose early if necessary. Assuming the body does feel safe, assuming we are working at that right edge, again, as you relax, let this be an opportunity to tune in. Let this be an opportunity to observe how the body feels here in this moment. Again, feeling any sensations as they arise, moment by moment, and breath by breath. Letting go of any extra tension, extra gripping or tightness that might be in the body. Noticing again and again how, by letting go on a physical level, the mind will naturally respond to that. The mind will naturally drop in more and more here. Just a few more slow breaths. Give yourself a few more moments here to let go, just that tiny little bit more. Let's take one more complete breath here as we are. 
Coming out, taking your time, slowly press yourself up away from the mat. You can take your left leg, extend it behind you, let it move, shake it out a bit if that feels good. You could even come into a short down dog for a few moments if you'd like. But once you've worked that out, coming again into a resonance here, I'm going to recommend resting on the knees in a child's pose, or you could also rest on your belly if that feels more comfortable for you. But finding a neutral shape for a few breaths, again, these transition poses are definitely an important part of the practice. We don't want to rush too quickly into the next pose. We want to give the tissues a chance to absorb the effects of what we've just done. Feeling that here for just a few more moments. Just a few more slow breaths. Whenever you're ready to, you can now pick yourself up. And we'll set up that pigeon pose, but targeting our um, right leg now. So from tabletop, you can scoot that right knee forward, resting a bit onto the outer edge of the calf. Scooting the left leg gradually back. And again, we want to be very mindful that we feel nothing in the knee. You could lie on your back and do figure four if that's the case. Grabbing a blanket or a block to bridge the gap between the floor and your hip if necessary. And once you've set yourself up here, again, we'll inhale and extend long. And as you exhale, relaxing your way down to the floor, settling and landing there. Primary targets for the shape will be in the outer hip on that right leg. That includes the IT band, maybe your glute. Remember, each person will feel these poses slightly differently from the next. So just notice what you feel in your body. And again, respect the feedback the body may be giving you. Listen to what it tells you. And work with that. Again, asking, what does it feel like to be in this posture here in this moment? What are you holding on to that you might not need? What could you release and let go of in the body or as well within your mind? Notice and observe what it feels like to let go in this deep way again and again. Just a few more deep breaths, a few more moments to settle that last little bit here where you are. From here, take a final complete breath. Feel your final moment in the pose. And carefully again, gradually again, start to lift yourself up and away from the earth. 
Maybe move that right leg about, just kind of circle into your hip. Again, you could even go as far as coming up into like down dog or something like that for a few breaths if you'd like. Once you've worked out a bit of movement, find your way into a neutral pose. Again, I'm opting for child's pose. I like the way that feels in my body, but this is arbitrary. You could rest on your belly. You could rest anywhere that you'd like. But once you're there with the eyes closed, again, let yourself settle. Let yourself land right here. And take a few deep breaths. From here now, we're going to make our way up into seated for our next posture. So we're gonna do wide-legged straddle, dragonfly pose. So this is a case where I think it might be beneficial if you turn sideways on your mat, which is what I'm gonna do here for my demo. Also a case where if you do have access to a blanket or a cushion to lift the hips, that may be helpful for many folks. So I'm gonna set ourselves up here with the feet nice and wide. Now, of course, like everything we do here, how wide you go will depend on your body. You wanna go wide enough that you feel bit of release in the inner thighs, but not so wide that, you know, there's a strong pull or a strain or anything like that. With yourself set up here, take a moment and relax the legs. Just kind of shake them out. Relax the shoulders, the upper back, and all of that. And then from here, you're going to take an inhale breath to lift. And as you exhale, again, easing forwards and remembering for some bodies, you might not come that far forwards at all. And that's totally fine. You just want to come far enough that you feel a bit more edge open up in the legs and feel that you're targeting especially the backs of the legs as well as the inner thigh. Totally okay to create a bit of round in the spine. Just making sure there's no tightness, no significant tension happening around the neck. Nothing that feels, you know, sharp or like it's pinching things. In the pose, we become more or less still. We let the body settle and take our time to let the pose do its own work. Asking what it feels like to receive the effects of the pose rather than needing to make anything specific happen within the pose. And again, maybe asking both within the body and as well within your mind, what are you holding on to that you don't need? What could you release to feel more space, to feel more calm and ease within the body and the mind? And just kind of a practical point for folks who may be newer to practicing with me. As we get later in the sequence, as we get deeper in, I tend to talk less and less. The intention behind that is to allow you an opportunity to really drop in, to allow you an opportunity to tune in without me steering the experience so directly. So to that end here, we've got just a little bit more time left. And let's take that time just being quiet, just being still. Notice what it feels like for you just to be here with things as they are, moment by moment, and breath by breath.
Now, as you're ready to here, we'll take a final complete breath. Slowly from there, inhaling to roll up, to rise up. Now that we are up, we can take a moment to relax the legs, the shoulders. Again, just kind of loosen everything up. Scoop under the legs here and draw them in, shake them out, move them a bit as you'd like. And then from here, let's now make our way all the way onto our backs. So as you lie down here, again, this is not the final Shavasana. This is a transition pose or what they call a resonance pose where we give the body a chance to absorb the effects of what we've just done. But same as you'll do in your final Shavasana in just a few minutes here. Close the eyes. Relax and be still and just notice what you feel within the body. Again, all of these poses are targeting tissues, targeting channels within the body in a particular way. And the energetic effects will allow us to feel more balanced, to feel more harmony within the chi or the subtle energy, whatever word you'd like to use to describe that. Let's take a deep inhale breath through the nose. And a gentle exhale breath out our mouth. On your back here, you'll open your eyes and walk your feet in so that knees are bent. You might appreciate a little sway side to side, kind of like a windshield wiper action just to reset things here. Now, as you come into the middle, you're gonna cross your left leg over the top, stacking the knees completely. From here, slowly roll all the way over onto your right side. So kind of like a weird fetal position thing going on. From here, you're gonna carefully begin to extend your left arm anywhere out and alongside you. Now, as you do that, coming into this twist here, lots of ways to fine tune, lots of ways to finesse this pose for your body, but set up in such a way that you feel a nice release onto the ribs, onto the shoulders, as with every pose we've done, make sure the level of intensity here is light to moderate at most. Nothing too much about it. And again, once you're in the pose, allowing yourself to be still. Allowing yourself to settle and let gravity take you. Notice and observe what arises here in each moment. Really be present for, really connect with that experience. What are you holding on to that you might be able to let go of? How does it feel for you to release and to let go through each moment in the pose? Feel that here for just about another minute or so.
please take a final complete breath where you are. Slowly wind your way into the middle here. Take a moment to unravel the cross of the legs. Take a moment to shift and release a bit here and there if you'd like. Just a very short pause between these two sides. And here now, as you're ready for it, we'll set up our second half. So we're going to cross our right leg completely over the top of the left, stacking the knees. From here, you're going to slowly roll all the way over to your left. Again, kind of like a strange fetal position for a few moments. From this side, you can now slowly roll and open that right shoulder onto the floor. And what I like about coming in this way, you can really choose, really place it exactly as works well for your body for this practice. So once you've found your position, I'm going to encourage you to close your eyes. Definitely invite you to really settle, to really land right here. Nothing we need to make happen here. Just relaxing the body and gravity will do the work for us. Excellent full body pose, wringing out the side body, the shoulders a bit onto the hips as well. So as you hold here for the next couple minutes, notice and observe how it feels to be here in this moment. And always ask what you could let go of. What don't you need in this moment within your body or within your mind? Feeling the effects of the pose as they shift little by little, as they evolve through our time here. About another minute left here, so just asking what you could let go of. Asking what you don't need. Let that all go. Let that all fall away. Please take a final complete breath right where you are. Slowly wind your way back into the middle here. Take a moment to uncross the legs. Shifting and releasing just one last time here. Now from here, please take your time and extend the legs out onto the floor. We're setting up final Shavasana, final rest. And I always mention, even though this practice was more or less passive, even though we weren't working hard in a conventional sense, this sort of work is still very deep and powerful for the body. So we want to give ourselves a few minutes to really settle, to really let us absorb the effect of this work. So with the eyes closed, just ensure that the body is completely at ease here. Ensure that you're completely relaxed. For these next few minutes, nowhere that we need to get, nothing that we're trying to make happen other than simply being here where we are. 
So to that end here, as you're ready to, we'll take one more gentle inhale breath through our nose. Open up your mouth as you exhale, let everything go and just surrender. Relax and release into the stillness here for the next little while. Once again, bringing a sense of awareness, bringing a sense of connection back to the body and back to your breath. From that connection, you can start to reintroduce some small movements of fingers and toes, hands and feet, and maybe ankles and wrists. Little by little, ramping things up until eventually, when you're ready to, you can roll over onto your side. And from your side, gently press your way up into a comfortable seat and close your eyes there. So in this final seat, with eyes closed, taking a final moment of presence, a final moment of connection, and really feeling the full effects of your practice. From here, we'll close officially with a short offering of metta or loving kindness. I'll say just a few words, and if the meaning of these words creates a connection for you, I invite you to repeat the words internally to deepen that connection for yourself. We'll join hands in front of the heart. May all beings be safe. May all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings live with ease in freedom from suffering. And may we dedicate our practice for the benefit of all beings. We bow. Well, thank you so very much for joining me for this practice. If you enjoyed this class, please be sure to press the like button. Please be sure to subscribe if you are not already. If you want to find out more about my teaching, you can always go to robphillipsyoga.com where you can see my full online schedule and in-person schedule, as well as anything else I might be up to. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining, and I hope to see you soon.